welcome to the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit Review. Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, kick off your shoes and relax your socks while we talk about this bad boy. Yesterday I got Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, but it came a day early. So when I went to the eShop to download the Mario Kart Home Circuit app, it wasn't available. And just like a kid on Christmas Eve, I was sat waiting, excited for today to come. And today is here, and I downloaded the app, and I took it for a spin. Now, first things first, the app is really easy to download. All you do is you type in MK Live, all one word, into eShop, and it pops up straight away, and it's a free download. You download it, took about 10, 15 minutes for me, and it's ready to go. Now, when I fired up the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit app, I wasn't really sure how it was gonna play through. Was it going to go into a menu system like a normal video game? Or with this being an augmented reality toy, was it going to do something different? Now straight away, when you open the app, it goes straight into describing the process of syncing your Mario Kart. And it's a really easy process. All you need to do is tap the power button on your Mario Kart, which switches it on. And then on the screen, there's a QR barcode and you point the camera on the Mario Kart at that barcode and it instantly syncs. Now, straight away when the barcode popped up, I thought, oh, here we go. These things are usually quite temperamental and quite often you have to get them perfectly aligned for it to work. But I got pretty much within a meter of the TV and straight away the cart had seen it. I didn't need to do any strange angling or, or moving about. It just picked it up straight away. So that was really nice and it made the whole process really easy and quick to do. As soon as that was done, the cart was ready to go. So it tells you to put your Mario Kart down on a smooth surface and straight away the fun begins because you go straight into the tutorial. But in the tutorial, you can just drive around. And if you've got a nice open space, straight away you're driving your little RC Mario Kart around. And honestly, it's really quite surreal. The perspective that the camera gives you, the field of view that you have when you're looking through your Switch, whether it's on the big TV screen or whether it's on your controller in portable mode, is so wide and vast, it's so good, that instantly you forget that you're driving a remote control car. You feel like you're playing a video game. And this really took me by surprise. This was something that I thought might be a little bit off-putting or spoil the immersion a little bit because I've flown drones with cameras before and unless you get the really high-end ones, usually it's really difficult to see what you're doing and it's hard to navigate around and, and the immersion of using a camera on a drone sometimes, especially the cheaper ones, is really spoiled. And I was worried that the Mario Kart remote control car would have the same issue. But I'm happy to say instantly, I could just see everywhere I was going. It didn't for one second feel like I had a tunnel vision or that anything was impaired. It felt every bit as much as open and visible as you would have if you were playing Mario Kart the video game. Now the thing I noticed straight away was just how smooth and responsive the kart was. Nintendo have managed to perfectly design the kart itself so that when you're playing through the video game, it feels like you are playing Mario Kart. It doesn't feel like it's janky or stumbling or delayed in any way, shape or form. Instantly, I was nipping around, in and out, around the stools and around the island in our kitchen. And I was able to shoot gaps that I really didn't think I'd be able to. If I was driving a normal RC car, I know there's no way I could precisely drive the car through some of those gaps in between the stools. But with the camera on the Mario Kart, I was able to do it with ease. And that's straight away without much learning, to be honest. Something else that I really liked about the control of the car as well was the nice turning circle. There were a few times when I was worried that I maybe wouldn't be able to take a corner or to take it sharp enough, but the turning circle is really quite tight and you're able to take hairpin turns with no problem whatsoever. Now, another thing I wasn't sure about and I wasn't that optimistic that Mario Kart Live Home Circuit would be able to deal with is carpeted surfaces, but I was really nicely surprised. You see, our kitchen is a tiled floor surface, but we do have a rug in there. And I would say the thickness of the rug is about on average that you would get with a standard carpet. And I was really pleasantly surprised when I would drive from the tile surface onto the rug that the cart would continue and handle it with no problem. And the carpet itself did have bumps in it to make it even a little bit trickier. 
but still the cart handled it no problem. Now naturally it was slower on the carpeted surface than it was on the tile surface and I'm guessing if you were driving entirely on a carpet the overall speed and experience would be a little bit slower. But I wouldn't say it was noticeably slower to the point where it took away from the enjoyment of the game. The size of the cart itself and the wheels look to be able to deal with most carpets you'll put at it, obviously apart from the very thick ones. And the wheels as well are designed in a way where they are high enough that I don't think you'll be getting that issue where you get trapped hairs like you can with some of the smaller, more micro kind of level RC cars when you can get some hair and dust trapped in the little wheels which slows them down. It looks like the RC car itself in Mario Kart is designed well enough for that not to be an issue. And if you did get hairs caught in there, it's all exposed, so you should be able to take them out no problem. Now, after driving around the tutorial mode for about a good half hour, because honestly, it was that much fun. I, I felt like I was living through my own episode of Toy Story driving around my kitchen. It, it was a really surreal and really enjoyable experience, to be honest. But anyway, when I finally decided to finish the tutorial, I went on to creating a race. Now, all you need to do to create a race is to take your four cardboard checkpoints and place them around your area. You have to make sure the number is facing the camera as you'll be driving through it, as that dictates the way around that you're going through the circuit. So when you've placed all your cardboard checkpoints down, all you need to do is drive up to checkpoint one, and there's a little area in front where you need to stop. It's quite easy and noticeable. When you stop there, you press X, and it begins the option to build your own track. So what happens from that point is you get some paint on your wheels, obviously in the game, not on your actual RC car. So anyway, your wheels are painted and then all you need to do is proceed to drive in the shape of the track that you want to create. Now, I was initially concerned that the track creation would be limited to a simple arc or curve from one checkpoint to the next. So you could only really create simplistic kinds of tracks. But I decided to push it a little bit more and do some crazier tracks to see if it would let me create some loops and some hairpins or if it would cut those out entirely. And I was pleased to say every single turn I took, every single loop, every single maneuver I made defined the track that I was going to race on. Now, if you get to the end of the track and you've made some mistakes and it isn't how you want, it's easy. You can just restart and do it again. And you can build as many tracks as you want over and over. But I was really pleased and happy to see that any idea I came up with, I could make in track form. Going underneath our kitchen island, looping around our stools and doing a few hairpins over onto the carpet and back down the street in front of the uh, kitchen sink. It really was exciting and the possibilities are just absolutely endless. I am actually really excited to build myself some cardboard ramps so then I could get a few little downhill sections in there as well, but I'll leave that for another day. As soon as the track was ready, we were ready to go racing. And it started just like any other Mario Kart race. You're there with the three lights countdown and then you go. The racing itself was absolutely brilliant and it's every bit as Mario Kart as you would hope it would be. It's got power-ups from speed mushrooms to invincibility stars to bullet bill. And when you do get your bullet bill power-up, the car itself goes on automatic pilot and it's really, really cool. Now, I must admit, if you've got some really narrow gaps in your track, where you're actually driving through physical obstacles. Me, for example, I had some of the stools. Bullet Bill can struggle a little bit in there if you've got a really intricate track laid out in between those. But for the most part, for most track designs, Bullet Bill goes on autopilot and gets you through there no problem. It was really, really amazing to see. Now, when you do get hit by power-ups from other opponents, if it's a shell or whatever, it does slow you down in the game and how that works is it actually slows the cart down as well and it's a really nice feature again it just feels so natural and it just feels so mario kart and another thing that i really liked a nice little touch was every time you do crash because inevitably you are going to be crashing into your stools into your chairs or whatever every time you do crash the graphics on screen perfectly represent what you would expect in Mario Kart when you crash. Now I will say I did crash a number of times and the car itself stood up really well. There's not a scratch on it today, which really just goes to show how sturdy and solid the design of the Mario Kart is. Another little touch as well that I liked was when I was going up onto the carpet and coming down off it, cause it's a little bit of a bump, again, it was giving the graphics as if Mario Kart was landing or, or, or coming off a bump or a jump. It really all added to the immersion of the game. Game. And that is something that really stood out to me because I was racing around for about a good hour and suddenly I realized I hadn't once actually looked at the, at the car in the real world racing around the kitchen. I was fully engrossed in the video game. 
I'd almost forgot that this cart was driving around right next to me. And I was purely focused on driving around my kitchen in this video game. And that just goes to show how well designed and good the camera is. Because if the camera wasn't up to scratch and it didn't give you that comfortable field of view, I really don't think the immersion would be there. And you'd constantly be looking at the cart to make sure you're going to the right place. But never once did I feel like I needed to look at the cart to make it any easier. The easiest way to drive this Mario Kart is through the camera on your Switch. Now, when I first found out about this coming out, I did have in the back of my mind that it might just be a gimmick, that it might just be the ability to create some simple tracks and drive a Mario Kart RC around. I wasn't really sure how solid the gameplay side of it would be, what the gameplay experience would be like. But Nintendo have done a fantastic job of not just creating a fun toy, but of also creating a great video game. Because the Mario Kart Live Circuit app has all the cups, power-ups, and different levels that you would expect to see in a Mario Kart video game. And on top of that, it's got loads of unlockables, different carts you can unlock, different outfits, and lots of different little things you can unlock for your carts as well. This doesn't feel like just some small fun gimmick that is an expensive RC toy. This feels like another brand new Mario Kart experience. And one that I am really excited about and cannot wait to get stuck into more and more. Now in terms of battery life, I'm not sure how long this bad boy lasts, but what I can say is that I played this for a good three hours and not once did it run out or show any signs of slowing down. And for me, that's pretty damn impressive, especially if you consider that this thing runs with a really good camera as well. Now for all the amazing things I have to say about this, there is one thing that was a little bit disappointing. When I first set up the game, I tried to play with the Mario Kart in the kitchen while I sat in the living room playing on the Switch. And I would say the distance between the two rooms is about five meters. And unfortunately, the signal just wasn't good enough. It was really choppy. You could see the camera was glitching out a little bit and to actually control Mario Kart was almost impossible because it kept on getting intermittent signals. It would like turn a bit and it would go forward a bit and then stop. It wasn't smooth and it wasn't responsive at all. So to get the true experience out of this, you need to be using your Switch and the car itself in the same room. If you're planning to play this with your Switch in console mode, it might be a bit of an issue if your console is in a different room to the room where you actually have the space to run the car around. However, if you're using your Switch in portable mode, then it's no problem at all, because you can just be in the same room with it. There is a part of me that would like to be able to play this with a car in a completely different room or to even have courses that go from one end of the house to the other. Now, technically you can make tracks like that, but you'll have to make sure that you're kind of moving along with the cart and keeping that, I think is about five meter distance to keep the signal nice and clean. But all in all, I think this is an absolutely fantastic idea from Nintendo. When I first saw this revealed, it absolutely blew my mind. My thoughts just started racing away with all the kinds of tracks I could create in my kitchen. And when I got it in real life, it lived up to all of those expectations. Honestly, even now I am thinking of different types of tracks I can create and different kinds of ways I can get the cart to interact with the environment. Honestly, that moment where it felt like I was in my own Toy Story movie, exploring my house down at toy level was just absolutely wonderful. And it's something that I think goes beyond the gimmick and it's something that I'm really going to enjoy and I know I'm going to have so much fun with the kids as well. Now, if you are on the fence and you're thinking about getting one of these for somebody for Christmas, I definitely recommend that you do. If they're a gamer, if they like Mario, or if they just like cool technology, there's so many things to love about this. And it's the type of video game toy that can genuinely be enjoyed with the whole family as well. Now, if you enjoyed this review and you enjoy episodes like this, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you love of Nintendo video games, retro gaming and all that good stuff then go and check out Retro Refresh which is eight content creators from the US and the UK that just have an absolute passion for video games and retro gaming. And if you enjoy this channel and want to show some extra support and get a shout out at the end of every episode then you can head on over to the Patreon page just like these guys. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters who help make these videos possible including Helazing Retro Gaming and Jack Mawson. If you want to show your support for Chronic Spartan games then you can head on over to chronicspartan.com and check out our indie games. You can become a Chronic Spartan patron at patreon.com or you can kick off your shoes and relax your socks with some chronic spartan merch from tpublic.com all links are in the description below but the simplest and easiest way to show your support is to just hit that subscribe button thank you for tuning in